who's ready for another video roundup of amazing archaeological discoveries. No need to put your hands up, we already know you're ready. If you weren't, you wouldn't be here. We've got some fantastic ancient objects to show you, each of which comes with a remarkable story. This is a show and tell video, so let's start showing and telling. Archaeology hasn't been a major concern in Ukraine during 2022 for obvious reasons, but that doesn't mean that archaeological discoveries weren't made by accident. In May, Ukrainian soldiers digging trenches in Odessa were surprised to discover a collection of ancient Greek amphorae. The discovery was made by members of the Ukrainian 126th Territorial Defense, who alerted staff from a nearby museum where the artifacts are now on display. Experts at the museum believe that the cache of urns is around 2,500 years old. They date to a time when Odessa was known as Odessus, which was founded by the Romans. Finds like this, where ancient artifacts are recovered safely, are a welcome break from the norm in Ukraine at the moment. International observers say that more than 120 sites of cultural importance have been damaged by the ongoing conflict, but the true number could be even higher than that. We're not yet sure what was once inside these recently recovered amphorae, but they were typically used to store liquid or dry goods, so it could have been anything from wine to the grapes used to make it. The oldest clay figurines ever found in the southwest of the United States of America were discovered by a farmer in a field close to Tucson in November 2016. Historians say the figurines are likely to have been created as fertility symbols. Looking at them, it's not hard to work out why they came to that conclusion. They're more than a little phallic. It's impossible to know who created the figurines, but the most likely candidates are the pre-contact desert farmers who lived in the region 3,000 years ago. This is the largest collection of figurines like this that has ever been found in the region, but isolated examples were found in 2006, and again in 2008. While the phallic explanation makes sense and is still the most likely purpose of the objects, there's some confusion about them because of the additional details that can be found on a few of them. One appears to have eyes, and another seems to have a depiction of long braided hair. Several seem to have breasts and thus could be interpreted as depicting both biological sexes at the same time. Alternatively, perhaps adding breasts, eyes, and hair was a joke. The most likely place to find an ancient Viking sword is Scandinavia. The second most likely is probably the United Kingdom. You're far less likely to find one in Turkey. But an ancient Viking sword nevertheless turned up there in the ancient city of Patara in late 2018. The archaeologists responsible for the discovery believed the sword to be a product of either the 9th or the 10th century. Back then, Patara would have been the capital of the ancient region of Lycia. The sword is a long way from home, but that's probably because its owner was almost certainly a long way from home too. Vikings are known to have served as mercenaries within the Byzantine army, so the Viking warrior who owned the sword likely came to Patara to fight for the empire in naval battles. Despite historical records confirming the presence of Vikings within the Byzantine army, physical evidence of their presence in the region is thin on the ground. In fact, this is only the second Viking sword ever to be found in Turkey. It was customary for swords to be buried in the graves of their owners, but that doesn't seem to be the case here, so it's possible it was dropped by accident. Speaking of Vikings, Archaeologists in Sweden got very excited in August 2022 when a 1,200-year-old brooch was found in a grave in the mountains. The style of both the brooch and the burial is enough to make archaeologists and historians believe that this is the grave of a female Viking. If so, it's the first one ever to be found in Sweden's mountainous regions. The brooch was found by Eskil Nistrum, a mountain hiker who was camping in the region and made the discovery while setting up his tent for the night. He took it to the Museum of Jantli in Ostersund, after which experts from the museum returned to the site of the discovery and found burned bones buried in the ground, indicating a cremation had taken place there. 
Fire was central to many of the burial rituals carried out by the Vikings, thus pointing to the idea that this was a Viking burial. A second oval brooch was found at the same time as the bones. However, there are no monuments, cairns, or burial mounds at the site. Whoever this woman was, she appears to have been buried in a hurry. Countless ancient Celtic artifacts have been found in the United Kingdom, but few of them are as strikingly beautiful as the Battersea Shield. The 2,100-year-old shield is considered by many to be the most significant piece of Celtic art ever found in the country. The shield is made of wood, with a sheet bronze covering decorated in the Le Ten style. Millions of visitors to the Museum of London believe they've seen the shield with their own eyes, but they haven't. The shield in the Museum of London is a replica. The real one is in the British Museum. It was found in the riverbed of the Thames in 1857, when it was dredged in preparation for the construction of Chelsea Bridge. Hundreds of Roman and Celtic skeletons and weapons were found at the same time. Because of that, British historians think the site of the discovery was the precise location where the armies of Julius Caesar crossed the River Thames as part of the invasion of Britain in the year 54 BCE. However, the shield itself was never used in battle. It shows no signs of damage and would have been too thin to be of any value in such a situation anyway. Its true purpose is unknown. Speaking of Celtic art, let's look at the Zeki Zehrovich head. This unusual-looking flat-faced sculpted bust was found on the outskirts of Prague, Czechia in 1943. Like the Battersea shield, the head is an example of the Latin style and is roughly the same age. The oft-photographed artifact is one of the best-known Iron Age works of art in Europe. It's also one of very few surviving large-scale depictions of the human form from the era. The head is made from limestone local to the place it was found, and was broken into five pieces before it was buried. The act of breaking and burial appears to have been deliberate. As you can see from these images, the face of the sculpture is a curious one. It has a mustache, eyes like an owl, ears like a lotus flower, and braided hair. The lotus-style ears are typical of the Latin style, but everything else about the sculpture is unique. We don't even know whether it's supposed to be a representation of a real person or an imaginary one. If it is a depiction of a real person, we can't imagine that they were flattered by it. In 1981, a stunning iron cap was found inside a cave close to Agri in France. It's thought of as one of the finest masterpieces of Celtic art ever to be found in France and is now known as the Agri Helmet. That's right, we're still talking about Celtic art. The entire iron surface is covered by carefully crafted bands of bronze, which have in turn been covered with pure gold leaf and coral decorations. Even the rivets used to attach the coral are made from silver. After extensive studies, archaeologists and historians have concluded that it's around 2,370 years old. The helmet as it's seen today in the Musée d'Angoulême has been painstakingly reconstructed. When it was first discovered, it was in pieces and had recently been disturbed by burrowing badgers. Without their unwitting assistance, we may never have found it. It seems that the cave was once protected by a ditch and a mud wall, so it may have been a makeshift fortress in the pre-Roman era. Oddly, the helmet appears to have been buried on purpose, even though there's no sign of a human burial nearby. That suggests it may have been a votive offering, but perhaps it was just an attempt to keep the valuable headgear safe from thieves. We're still not done with Celtic artifacts, and we're not done with helmets either. Next up, we have the Waterloo Helmet, so named because it was found in the River Thames close to Waterloo Bridge in London, England in 1868. By now, you should be able to recognize its signature Latin repose decorations. It dates to the pre-Roman era in England, with an estimated age of 2,100 years. The horned helmet, made of solid bronze, is made of bronze sheets so thin that it would have been far too fragile to wear in battle. Even if it were thicker, the horns would have made it impractical. It's more likely to have been worn in ceremonies and parades, assuming it was ever worn at all. 
It's too small to fit on the head of an adult male, and it's unlikely to have been made for a child, so it might have been placed atop a wooden statue of a Celtic god. It's considered an especially important artifact because it's one of only three helmets from the Iron Age ever found in England, and also the only Iron Age horned helmet ever found in Europe. The stone drums of Qin are among China's most unusual ancient artifacts. There are ten of them in total, all of which bear inscriptions etched into the stone. With an age of approximately 2,500 years, they're the oldest stone inscriptions in China. Each of the inscriptions is written in a rhyming poetic style and makes reference to royal fishing and hunting trips. Obviously, real drums aren't made of stone, and the artifacts probably weren't deliberately designed to look like drums. However, they've been referred to as the stone drums of Qin since at least the 7th century, and possibly longer than that. Chinese history doesn't record when they were carved, why, or by whom. The time and location of their discovery are also unrecorded. There's general agreement among historians that they were made for a duke of the state of Qin, but we have no way of knowing which duke or when. It's also possible that they were once placed within the Qin royal tombs in Qiangqi province, but that can't be proven either. They're every bit as mysterious as they are famous. The Makapanzgat pebble looks like a crude rendition of a human face etched into a tiny piece of jasperite cobble. It can't have been designed to look like that, though, because it's more than three million years old. Rather than being an ancient piece of art, Historians think it might be the world's oldest maniport, by which we mean it's an object that was deliberately picked up from its original location and taken elsewhere without being modified in the process. The pebble was found inside a cave in the Makapan Valley of South Africa in 1925, more than 20 miles away from the nearest possible natural source of the material it's made of. The bones of an early hominid species were found in the same cave, suggesting a connection between the hominids and the pebble. It's possible that the hominids recognized the likeness of a face in the pebble and picked it up to take it back to the cave with them because they liked it. If so, it would be the earliest known example of hominids demonstrating symbolic thought. It's a hugely controversial theory, though, and can never be proven. You don't win any prizes for guessing what the Apollo Avei is. It's a statue of the Roman god Apollo, and it was found in the ruins of the ancient Etruscan city of Vey, Italy. That basic description doesn't do the statue justice, though. It's life-sized, and other than the fact it's missing its arms, the sculpture is in such good condition that even its original painted details are still visible. The terracotta statue would once have been placed at the highest point of a temple dedicated to the deity. Scientists have been able to confirm that it was created somewhere between the years 510 and 500 BCE. Historians think it was probably made by the Etruscan artist Volca, who also built the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus and is the only Etruscan artist known to historians by name. It's thought that the statue may once have carried a bow in its missing left arm. Some experts in ancient Etruscan history have speculated that it might have been one of a series of statues depicting the labors of Hercules, pointing to the presence of the head of a statue of Mercury which was found nearby. We'll finish with another ancient Etruscan discovery, but it's not a work of art. It's the Monteleone Chariot, which is held to be one of the greatest archaeological finds in world history. The chariot, which has been dated to the year 530 BCE, was found in the Italian town of Monteleone di Spoleto in 1902, but is now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. What makes it so special is that it's a complete chariot. Hundreds of ancient Roman or Etruscan chariots have been found over the years, but only six are even close to being complete, and none are so well preserved as this one. The chariot was found as part of a chariot burial and contained two sets of human remains and a pair of bronze drinking vessels when it was found. It's made of wood, but its surface is covered by hammered bronze plates and carved pieces of ivory. It was once thought to have been created specifically for the burial, 
but a re-examination of the piece in 1989 revealed that it had been used extensively and had been subjected to at least one set of extensive repairs after being seriously damaged. It's in such good condition that it could still be used today, although we're sure the museum would frown on the idea. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.